Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about 5 of the fishiest ways that people make money on CSGO. Most of these ways will either get you trade banned or extremely looked down upon by the CSGO community, but it's pretty insane how much some people make by doing shady shit in CSGO. So we're going to start with the most obvious way, which is obviously scamming and impersonating. Even though most people know about the different types of Steam scamming methods, there is still enough people that get scammed that Steam had to implement the trade holds and attempt to lower the amount of people that get scammed because they used to get 77,000 reports a month, which doesn't even include like the non-reported ones. That and Steam support somehow falls for the duping and dupes for like millions of dollars into the CSGO economy. So Steam support is probably just as stupid as some of the people that fall for the most obvious scams. So one of the most common scams is probably like the fake Steam link where they change like one or two letters in a Steam community website and somehow people fall for that and they log into their accounts on the fake site and then they get hacked. Another common one is where they fall for when a random account adds you and they tell you that you won like you won a raffle or something and you need to download something and that you download it and then you get hacked. And there's a lot of accounts that impersonate people and will try to buy stuff from you through real, real money and you go first and then you lose your shit. So it's pretty insane how many people still get scammed on Steam and it's obviously a multi, multi-million dollar industry. And some people even think that Steam support can't be that stupid to add millions of dollars by literally duping the same items like 10, 20, even 30 times. Like they just find a way to do it and... Just like the 77,000 people that get scammed by like the most obvious ways. Another way is all those people who market bot. So all those dragon lords and high tier knives that are above market price used to always be bought by the market bots. But now obviously there's a new way where you can fight back and place orders on the dragon lord and all those items so that the market botters just don't make all the money. But I've seen accounts that still have like hundreds and hundreds of Catawasi sticker skins on them so I'm pretty sure those were all market botted and I'm sure market botters will find another way to make money if not the dragler but obviously market botting will get you banned from Steam. So the third way which is probably the most looked down upon way is people who are involved in match fixing. The most famous cases probably being the I buy power, huge NA throw scandal and the killer fish people. And with the most famous match fixers probably being Stormberg and Cud. Cud was the guy involved in the whole I buy power thing and he's also involved in the Vietnam knee scene today. Somehow match fixing doesn't actually even get you trade ban, so some of the like the fishy lower tier teams make profit from this. The fourth way is the people who do the market swing and the pump and dumps. Even though they aren't as effective today, it's still being done. So the pump and dumps, what a lot of people did was they buy a lot of lower tier skins and pushed up the price of them and then you dump it all on Cisco Jackpot, Shuffle, or even Lounge. So what we do is you bet a $2 skin, but on a site it would be worth $20 because you pumped it up so much and then you just dump all the skins on the site. So the fifth way, which is technically legal but is still looked down upon, is, is kind of fishy way, is the people who lounge sway and cross bet on Lounge. One of the most uh, popular example is probably the LG vs Envious. So what people did there was they bet around 200 to 300 accounts on LG, bringing LG odds up to 20% so that more people would be betting on Envious instead of LG. And then like 15 minutes before the match, you change 80% of your accounts onto Envious, making the odds 95 to 5, and then cross betting. So this is doable because of the lounge system of overpay and underpay, which is due to the fact that you cannot split a $6 skin into multiple parts. So let's say you bet on one account, one max bet on Envious versus LG. Normally, you would get a return of $5. With the overpay system, you could be, could be getting as much as $75. So then, like, what you do is you bet on LG, let's say $25, giving you a $425 return. So that, that way, cross betting, if LG wins, you make money. If LG loses, you break even because of the overpay system. So let's say you cross bet on 200 accounts max on Envious, and let's say you bet on 50 accounts to cover $100 each on LG. So that's $60,000 max bets on Envious and $7,500 on LG. If Envious wins, you break even due to overpay system and stealing money from the poor pretty much. 
If LG wins, you make around $60,000 just from odd swing, risk-free. So one of the most well-known person that does this is probably Tequila. Not really sure how to say his name, but what he does is he cross bets on over 200 counts and then odd sways like the fucking odds for everybody else. This is one of the worst ways, in my opinion, because they are abusing the fact that Lounge takes a 0% cut in the overpay system, and you're pretty much stealing from the poor when the overdog wins. Somehow, the Lounge guys don't ban them for this, but yeah.